Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, when we left off, we had a double agent in our midst, potentially. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what was going on with Pelasaur there, but... Well, hopefully I won't have to execute him. I would feel very bad about that, actually. He's become a massive staple in our army at this point. And uh, he's kind of like, uh, you know, he's kind of like the mascot. He's kind of like the mascot. Don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him that I said that. Anyway... Um, a lot of your comments have been extremely amusing, very, very funny um, regarding Pelasaur, and I very much appreciate those. They are great. They are very, very great. Anyway, we are going to be attacking Medini Castle here because Sega is in the garrison, and you can quite easily see that she is having a bit of a problem. She only has one unit, which I assume is actually her, in her army that is still capable of of walking around and things because the rest of them are wounded for some unknown reason. Anyway, I am going to continue speeding through this. And what? What? <laughs> what actually happened right there? I was thinking to myself, what? Because uh, <laughs> I have trebuchets. I've actually been building trebuchets, if you can believe that, because I personally wasn't having a very good time with building onagers and i thought okay well what's the next step up from that well it's trebuchets so i decided hey let's do it you know let's go for it and they do take a long time to build which is the only thing that i'm not a big fan of of course i mean as it is in warband i'm not a big fan of building siege towers over ladders but they don't really give you the option there sometimes castles and towns just require you to build those siege towers but obviously in Bannerlord you have the choice you can decide what you want to go for but obviously some strategies are better than others and you know it really just depends on what you're going for anyway I am going to yeah as you can see look at that 3200 HP I'm going to build all of these I'm just going to get all of these and I believe someone actually mentioned in the comments that uh well not mentioned but uh, more more like asked a question whether you can put these siege engines into your reserves and then take them to an to an additional siege somewhere else as far as i'm aware that is not possible at this time i think it would be really cool if the developers implemented that i think that would be fantastic but as it stands, I'm not entirely sure if it makes sense in a sort of realistic sort of sort of style. Because if you take a huge siege engine like a trebuchet, how are you going to transport it? It's going to be very difficult to transport. But of course, because this is a game, maybe maybe they'll make an exception for it. Who knows? But anyway, let's see how our trebuchets do. By the way, the other people, the other uh, other vassals that I want to eliminate. I was actually just having a look at Sega here, so I, I knew where she was. As you can see, she's at Medini Castle. Anyway, the point is, is uh, the other people have actually been taken prisoner. There's been quite a few people taken prisoner from the Southern Empire. I'm not entirely sure which ones they were. This one, this woman right here, she was taken prisoner. And... Uh, no, not Pelasaur. <laughs> I still find it hilarious seeing his name there. And uh, who else was taken prisoner? I think this guy was taken prisoner by one of our vassals. I think it was Allery. Allery took, the, took them prisoner. So I'm hopeful that what I will be able to do is after... Yeah, yeah there's the crashing one. Yes, anyway, I'm hoping that after we have eliminated Sega we will be able to uh, hopefully do something about the other two, maybe try and find where that particular vassal is and uh, try and trade for the prisoners. As you can see, however, the trebuchets are just making absolute mincemeat out of the enemy catapults and indeed the walls as well. Just look at how much damage they're capable of dealing. Such an incredible amount of damage and they really don't even have well, there's no, there's no counter to these. As long as you can build all of these, then you're done, you know? You're done, and it's great. Um, I think that personally the developers will probably change how sieges work. And you may be asking yourself, why? What, what, what's the problem with the sieges at the moment? Well, the main issue is that it is 
quite heavily in favor of one or the other. So the defenders sometimes will have an overwhelming advantage because they're able to destroy your siege engines extremely fast, dependent on what kind of setup they have in their, in their castle or town. But then you also have the uh, offense, you know, because let's let's say that uh, uh, let's say that I'm defending a castle, okay, and uh, let's say the enemy has uh, let's say the enemy is trying to build onagers, and I have ballistas on the wall. There is no way that the enemy will ever be able to build those onagers because every single one of my ballistas will be focusing down that first onager every single time. And the point is, is that the reason why I think they're probably going to look at uh, revising the siege mechanics, even though I personally find them really, really fun and quite enjoyable, um, I don't think they'll keep it this way because the way that it's working right now is that when the player builds some offensive siege equipment, what's going to happen? Well, as soon as it's built, they're going to put it in reserve, and then they're going to the, the siege the siege engine itself is going to take maybe a little bit of damage. It will probably, dependent on what it is, take maybe about 20%, 30% damage, and then you can continue doing what you want to do, basically which is build other siege engines. And you can just rinse and repeat this particular strategy for the entire time that you're besieging something. And then you are basically done. So for example, the trebuchets. You know the trebuchets that I just brought out. I basically built one by one by one. It does take a lot longer to build the trebuchets. So if there is an army around, which I know there isn't at this point, because we have, well, quite obviously murdered quite a few of them. Anyway, the point is, is that if there was an army around, then of course we would have that threat of um, potential destruction on our hands. But as it stands right now, why am I only doing six damage, by the way? What What, what is actually going on here? There we go. I seem to be hitting with the, uh, with the shaft of my axe rather than the actual cutty bit. So yes, I should probably make sure that that works adequately enough, yes. As soon as I can hit people with the cutty bit, that's all that I really need. It really helps. <laughs> it really does help to actually hit them with the actual lethal part. Otherwise, it's just going bonk, bonk all the time. I'm sure Pelosaur knows what I'm talking about. Although, maybe not, because maybe he's turned into an absolute monster warrior of some kind now. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's probably the reason why I think they might change the siege mechanics a little bit. Because for the player to be able to put these siege engines into reserve is quite strong. I mean, we've got to face, you know, we've got to face facts here. It is quite strong to be able to remove your siege engine from the attack of your opponent. Of course, being able to remove it instantly, that is very, very powerful. However, on the other side of things, if you were to look at it in the same way, how are you going to change it to make it fairer for both sides? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, because let's say that uh, let's say that I actually build um, let's say I build a trebuchet, and then the trebuchet is built, and I want to remove it, and I want to put it into reserve until the others are built. But let's say that they add a delay to the reserve. So let's say it takes five seconds or something like that to bring a siege equipment out of the battle and put it back into your reserves adding a five second delay is going to make that particular siege engine, unless it's a trebuchet, basically useless. So the rest of these options that you have, for example, ballistas and catapults, onagers and all that stuff, they're going to be basically useless because if, as I've said before, if you have a, an enemy with a huge amount of ballistas or catapults on the wall already, let's say they have four of them, and you're building an onager, and that onager takes five seconds to go back into the reserve, it is going to be impossible to pull it out without it dying, without it being destroyed. So it is a bit of a weird situation with the siege um, at the moment, which is kind of sad because I actually quite like the siege as it is, but I, I do feel like there are probably going to be some revisions uh, just purely because it is quite heavily in the player's favor at the moment, because the AI is never, ever going to remove 
siege engines into the reserves because if they do that, they're basically going to win every single siege defense. And that's that's the issue. But yeah, I don't think that's a particularly important point at this at this moment in time. I think the most important thing for the developers right now, for them, is to concentrate on obviously the, the crashing and making the game a little bit more balanced in regards to its general overall feel and situational uh, circumstances. So not nothing, nothing really necessary in terms of, you know, siege mechanics and stuff like that. I think that siege mechanics will be revised, but I don't think it is a priority by any means. But I was just giving you my opinion on what on the whole thing anyway so you could kind of get an idea as to what i'm thinking and and so on but anyway um yeah we are actually over our prisoner limit so i'm actually wondering whether i have now just kind of messed up because uh, i actually wanted to save there as well because i i don't i don't want to crash but i'm actually wondering whether i messed up nope nope okay i didn't phew uh that was a bit close wasn't it okay so let's execute please do not crash okay no crash phew i was a bit worried about that okay so now we have a bunch of extra prisoners here. I have actually been taking a couple of castles off screen as well. These were basically on the outskirts, well not on the outskirts, but kind of on the border to our own uh, our own faction. Also, by the way, uh, something rather peculiar happened to me when I was off screen. And uh, I, I guess that is kind of a usual occurrence nowadays in Barney's series. There seems to be something weird happening almost every time, doesn't it? Anyway, the point is, is that what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to claim one of the castles that I took for myself. You know, I, I, you know, I thought I, I kind of deserved it considering I took two castles and uh, De Death Art or whatever his name is is literally having, I don't even know, 10 fiefs or something like that. And I have one in the form of Praven. And what I did was I voted for myself. I spent 300 influence to be able to do that. And this is, yeah, I took a, a very long time to, well, actually not even that long to get over here. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, everything seems to be absolutely fine over here. So I took, uh, I took this castle over here because this, is, this was just, very easy for us to just travel from Talavel Castle all the way over there. They only had about 200 units, very simple to do. And then I also took this castle over here, which is next to Ox Hall. And I asked for this one. I basically voted for myself. I had 100% of the uh, vote, I guess you could say. And he declined. <laughs> yeah, he declined. I'm actually kind of surprised at that because we have been basically keeping Vlandir alive for the last however many in-game years. But, uh, well, <laughs> if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he wants to do. All right, so I, I think the best thing that we can do right now is go to the kingdom and we're just going to have a look at the various clans. Okay, so this guy is also a vassal of the Southern Empire. Let us see where he is. Diathma. Right. Where is... Why? Why are you all the way up here? You imbecile. Ah, that is terrible. Okay, I do not really want to go all the way up there if I am honest. So I'm just going to leave that tracked because that's probably where he's going to spend most of his time, let's face it. And let's see where these people are. Okay, so she is, I think, still potentially a prisoner of some of our people so i'm not entirely sure but i'm going to track this area as well and we're just going to track the areas where they are last seen so that we can go over there i don't know who this is it it, it seems like him you know and he was last seen at sargot 11 days ago which i'm pretty sure is where i was 11 days ago so that is kind of hilarious mm-hmm Yes, yeah, some kind of shadow shadow figure following us around and everything. Okay, so this guy was last seen at Ressos Castle. Okay, so we've got three different places that we can check out. And I suppose the best thing... Yeah, they're actually all very close by as well to each other. This is pretty good for us. I think we should be able to catch up to them. Mm, just cross your fingers, I guess. All right, so uh, <laughs> after a brief stopover in a uh, in a town, in one of our towns, I rushed over here as quickly as I could. 
I have no idea what this guy is doing. Look at where he is right now. He is next to one of the towns that uh, I marked, as well as the castle, of course. But here's the thing. I did not actually... Uh, wait a minute, there's two of them here? There are two vassals just standing here on the outside of the cliff, and they're not doing anything. I, I literally walked this way. I was literally running this way. As you can see, look at this. They can't move. It says they're engaging my party at the moment, but they, they, they can't move. I, I don't exactly know what's going on here. And look at this. I'm trying to click on them, and I cannot engage. I cannot engage. That's it. <laughs> uh, that is kind of funny. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Maybe I need to go to the other side? No, that doesn't seem to be the case. So I am perfectly happy to accept any suggestions whatsoever about what I have to do here. I mean, you can quite clearly see that these guys are a part of the Southern Empire. So, uh... If, if, they, if it wasn't bugged like this, I would probably be able to take these guys down. Well, I mean, pretty easily. I mean, it's obvious, right? I mean, look, they, they, they have 18 and 16 in their armies respectively, and there is no way for me to get over there. I have clicked on them, as you can see, uh, beforehand, and they don't appear to react in any way. Rosevor is actually in here, so I suppose we could attack him... But uh, I, I guess we could just... I, I, I don't really know, you see. I really don't know what to do because this guy only has nine units. I'm not entirely sure why they only have such small armies because they have the entirety of the map to uh, run around and do whatever they want to do. But maybe they have become completely drunk on power. It might very well be that that is, in, that is indeed the case because they're literally in a situation where they can run around the entire map pretty much unhindered by anything, with the exception of bandits, of course, and they're not deciding to do that at all, which is kind of weird, but uh, who am I to say? Who am I to say? I mean, you know, if they want to stand on a cliff and be stuck there, then uh, that's, that's not really anything I could... Wait a minute. Are they actually sallying out right now? Yes, they are. Very intriguing. I would not have anticipated them doing this, considering he's only got four units, but all right. I don't think they would have sallied out otherwise. Maybe they would have. Mm, maybe they just needed some leadership from a vassal or something. All right, so the enemy approaches, and uh, this is actually going to be a bit tricky for us, because even though we quite honestly know that there are not that many very good units on the enemy's side, they have the numbers. And the numbers can sometimes do a lot of damage, so we might be in a bit of bother here. But they don't have any cavalry for the most part, they literally just have that one guy. So it should be pretty easy for us. This is kind of when I wish I had a little bit of ranged capability, but, well, I don't. So we're just going to have to deal with it as best we can. I'm hopeful that my archers will start firing. As you can see, this is basically, in my opinion, probably one of the best places that I could have gotten onto in such a short period of time, because I don't think I could really get anywhere else without dramatically sacrificing our positioning or advantage in some way. So I'm hopeful that we will be okay here. I don't really want to go close to them either because they're just going to cut me down in a hail of arrows more than likely. So I'm just going to let my crossbowmen do as much damage as they possibly can and then we'll see what we can do. I would like to be able to win this in one try. I don't really want to do the thing where we, uh, you know, retreat and come back in, retreat and come back in. I don't really want to do that, if at all possible, because I feel like maybe our tactics should be enough to see us through this, but as I've said, numbers generally always have the advantage, even if they do end up losing a huge amount of units. If they win the, you know, if, we, if they win the battle in the end, then it really doesn't matter either way. You know, victory is basically the only thing that matters at this point, especially for me, because if I lose, Barney's entire army is gone, 
and his companions are gone. Pelosaur is probably going to be gone as well. I'm not entirely sure if I can even find him again if he gets taken prisoner. I think I think I might be able to because I think uh, I think we have gotten taken prisoner earlier on in the series, and it's been a while since I've had that happen. So I'm a bit <laughs> a bit worried about it. Let's just say that. So if I do get taken prisoner, then we might be in a pretty bad situation. But how many have we eliminated so far? Quite a, quite a few. And they don't seem to be charging or anything like that. I think they're actually kind of worried. Can't believe I missed that. Really? Okay, well, yeah, whatever the case, I think they are actually extremely worried, and that's the reason why they're not doing anything. Ah, Laska. Yes, Laska has gained a level. Fantastic. Very good. It's been a while since uh, any of our companions have leveled up, actually. Alright, so it seems like most of them might be running now because of our morale damage that we've caused so far. Bear in mind that we can cause even more by running into these guys and uh, taking out even more of them, which is very nice indeed. Oh, just cutting them down. It's actually very satisfying to use weapons in Bannerlord as well. I, I need to mention that because obviously in Warband, the combat's very different and the, uh, the hit registration of, of various things very very different as well now we're going to just charge straight on in here and i'm actually going to charge my cavalry as well because we're going to charge in from the back and hopefully that will be enough to chase off a lot of the infantry here as you can see yes they are they are actually running away most of them are running away at least and that is all that i can ask for uh, even though we are probably going to be taking quite a few casualties but here's the thing if we're able to eliminate a lot of people here i might even be able to auto resolve the entire siege without having to even build uh, trebuchets or anything like that even though the auto resolve is probably going to result in a lot of deaths anyway so i might not want to do it just for the sake of longevity and survival within my army so who knows who knows we'll see what happens these guys are actually kind of hard the imperial uh veteran archers ah whoa that was a palatine guard as you can see my war razor usually does about 150 to 200 damage but the palatine guard only took 84 and even though i was able to still kill him relatively well he still took much, much less damage than usual. So that is actually quite a testament to the Palatine Guards. Anyway, we're just going to tell everyone to charge in now so that we can finally get our archers into effective range, potentially, if they are even out of range at the moment, which I don't think they are. And, uh, I, yeah, another, another thing about the combat that I really, really like is the fact that if a, a particular unit has a shield on their back, then they will block melee attacks a small amount. They will, they, sometimes it will be bigger than others, but most of the time what will happen is it will give you a damage reduction of some kind. So if you do get hit on the back, you're going to take reduced damage, which is fantastic. They did do this in Warband as well, but only as far as I can remember from arrows i think arrows were the main thing that you would be able to absorb damage from behind if you had a shield on your back i don't think it applied to melee strikes i don't think so at least because i've always been able to kill you know huskals for example when they have a shield on their back very easily so maybe uh maybe that wasn't the case there but otherwise that is indeed a victory for us we lost 25 units which is quite significant but look at the amount of stuff that we're getting renown influence morale all kinds of crazy stuff and this guy is now our prisoner and what we will be doing is i will be basically my rule from now has been to basically just take tier three and below units any single time i can just take tier three and below uh not everything of course but you know most things that i think are going to be good for us then i will take those and level them up and hopefully yeah there we go so that's actually enough for us right there so i'm just gonna try and persuade a couple of people to join us and then we can free up some space in our prisoners hold and we can even gain some more space because we're gaining more troops in our army because our prisoner capacity is of course determined by how much how, well how many people we have that's that's basically it anyway let's get some imperial archers right there and there we go that's actually all i can take 
All right. So let's have a look at the value here. Just want to make sure that I'm not missing out on any good armor. <laughs> I am actually going to start doing that because I know that a couple of you did want me to, you know, make the most of these uh, these items and things like that. And I, I very much appreciate that. I do appreciate it. I just, well, I don't need the money, but uh, the upgrade could be quite useful for one of our companions, I suppose. So that would be uh, pretty good. Anyway, let's continue onward. I will probably continue the siege, but what I will do first is I will save because I'm a bit worried about executing the guy and then it crashing after such a dramatic victory. So let's see. I'm a bit worried about... Wait a minute. Uh, okay, Ooh, I, was, I was worried. I was super worried about that. But there you go. That is another clan from Sturgia, by the way that we have now eliminated and uh, I think personally if those uh, if those uh, vassals um, become unstuck I think we are basically already there but I would love to be able to see if we can make it happen you know with the executions uh, yeah but uh, yeah I'm hopeful that they will get themselves unstuck somehow but I gotta say, it's looking quite unlikely. But uh, yeah, here's the Southern Empire. So this guy is apparently the leader. Uh, he is missing. I I don't even know what what he's doing right now. It's kind of bugged out a little bit, as you can no doubt see. He was executed in 1094 at the age of 30. He was literally um, yeah, that was three years ago. That was three years ago that this guy was executed. That's kind of amusing. But anyway, there you go. So this woman right here. And then we have Pelasaur, obviously. I haven't seen actual Pelasaur on the map. So wait a minute. Yeah, it just tells me where where I have been. Last seen at Sargoth five days ago. That's super weird. I feel like he's going to backstab us in the end or something like that. Anyway, I'm just going to send the troops in because it's going to be an automatic victory. And that is indeed that. Fantastic. We are over our prisoner's limit, so I won't take anything else. Won't take anything else here. And there we go. All right, so we are now done here. And uh, <laughs> what do you bet that he's going to literally give it to himself again? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for myself just so that you can look at this. Ah, there we go. See, now he's going to hate us, but I'm going to try and see if I can make it happen. Nope. As you can see, he's giving it to himself yet again. So even if I were to want to get some stuff for myself, uh, he, as you can see, is just absolutely monopolizing every single thing in sight. Which, personally, I wouldn't have minded before. But now I kind of mind because I wouldn't mind to have just a little bit of these places. You know, uh, maybe a town or a castle here and there. And uh, I think he has enough, don't you think? Well, what can I do? What can I do about that? Not much. Um, okay, so let me have a look here. So this is where we currently are, of course. And okay, so what is my current status here? Because obviously, Pelasaur, I don't know whether I can... I mean, who is this? I mean, I don't know. I don't know who he is. and I don't know where to find him or anything like that. So I guess we'll just leave him be. But Manan, where was she? Last seen at Charas. Aha, so she's in the prisoner's hold there by the looks of things. Which I will not be able to do anything about because I've tried that before where if there is a, uh, a vassal in the prisoner's hold of a particular town or castle, you're not able to go in there and retrieve them, which is kind of sad. So I think that that might be a nice feature to include in the future maybe the developers will do that who knows but otherwise then we just have this guy as we've seen he is stuck on that cliff and then we have this guy who is also stuck on that cliff and who else do we have we just have two more people and we ha then we have vadrios where is he he was last seen near onika i haven't tracked that so where is that Onika is 
Oh, far away, far down there. Okay, well, let's um, let's just make a brief stopover at the two um, the two lovers, I guess you could call them, because they're right on the cliff there. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, to be honest. Looking out at the sunset or sunrise or something. Yeah, uh, yes. Anyway, look, click on them. Doesn't work. Click on them. Nope, 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 nope. See, it does not work. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get to those guys, to be honest. I, I mean, I would equip my throwing weapons and just throw it at them if I could. But that uh, that obviously doesn't work, you know. That's just not how it works because we're on the world map. But uh, yeah. Anyway, we're going to travel over to Onika here. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to find the last, one of the last guys. Who is it again? Vadrios. Okay, and then of course we have Deniria, who is also who is at Poros. Okay, and Poros, I believe, is very close by to Onika. Yes, it is. So this is going to be intriguing to see whether they are indeed stuck as well. Oh, look at that! It seems as though um, Death Art is actually taking some stuff as well. And uh, should I? I mean, literally, what, what is the point in me even voting on this? Because he's literally just going to give it to himself every single time, as you can see. Even if I, even if I vote for him, he, he doesn't overrule me. And he doesn't go like, hey, no, no, don't you, you keep it, you know? He doesn't go like that at all, does he? Uh, yeah, well, whatever the case. Let's see if we can find those other two vassals somewhere around here. Ah! Oh. Did you see that? The game literally just froze for a second. And I'm thinking to myself, Daenerya, don't do it. My uh, EXE cannot handle it any further. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, whatever the case, let's... Uh, I'm, you know what I'm actually going to do? I am so paranoid. I'm literally just going to save again. And uh, we'll see if uh, maybe we can get her and the other guy in, in a fight. That's Caravan... Where's the other guy? He's not in here. Uh, where Where is he? Oh no, she's going to be way too fast for me, isn't she? She's literally going to go much too fast for me to even be able to catch up at this point. Ugh. No, don't do this. Don't do this, Daenerya. Why? Uh, <laughs> okay, so if she's not crashing my game, she is making me run across the entirety of the map to try and catch her. And the thing is, is that I guess, you know what? I guess, wait a minute. Oh, she's actually fighting someone. So it seems as though I don't need to really worry about catching her up anymore. But I suppose I should just try and persuade a couple of people to join us anyway. Because it is kind of useful to do that a little bit. Ah, Pelosaur, Pelosaur, what are you doing, Pelosaur? I'm still a bit worried about how I'm supposed to deal with him, to be honest. Okay, so there you go. She's being attacked by some bandits. And I will just wait here uh, until she's done. Because she is going to win. It's just a matter of time. There we go. Okay, now get her. Go, 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 go. Yes, there we go. All right, that's fantastic. So, good day to you. Yes, good day to you, Daenerya, as well. Okay, so yes, save once again because I don't want to have to chase her down again. And let's go and... Take her down. I'm perfectly happy with the auto-resolve because I'm kind of worried about general things. So I'm perfectly happy to lose seven or so units there. Really don't mind about that. And we now have uh, the ability to take some more people, which I very much appreciate. Especially the tier three guys. Very nice. All right. So she has some grain, which I will take. But that is basically it, I think. Yep. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, more saving, yes, more saving, because here it comes, fellows, and um, what I will say is if it crashes, I will end the episode here, but if it doesn't crash, then I will try to find the other guy. So it is all a coin flip. Let's see what happens. No, she is causing me to crash once again, right. Ah, uh, never mind. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.